All right, here at the Chef uh, with assistant, well, associate head coach Chris Lowry at K State. It's been a while since we had one of these. How are you, how are you doing, sir? Good. It's been a while. You know, we've been uh, busy. You guys have been busy, obviously, covering football. We've been busy with recruiting in the start right. of the season. So we just kind of. Um, no, missed each other. So I know. Now we're back. I know. We're at the chef. I, I, we, I don't think we've done a show yet here, have we? We haven't. I don't done think one we have. Chef, so yeah. I'm excited about it. But I've been thinking all morning, like to start with recruiting or the season, and I'm just going to start with the, you know, the season now. Um, I want to start off by saying I'm obviously kind of a homer for this program, and that's okay for you to admit. Uh, but I guess I'm kind of. I think some people have maybe not appreciated it enough the first couple of wins this year. We'll get back to last night's too, but you know, beat a tournament team in North Dakota State at home, then you go on the road and have a rough first half and come back and win at UNLV. I guess just how proud of were you of getting those two wins to start the year I, off? I think anytime you can win a game, they're always important. But uh, to go on the road um, to to coaching staff that's very very familiar with yep. us at UNLV. TJ obviously was at Iowa State for years, and then. Um, Coach Kruger's son is on the staff now yeah. all of a sudden. So they really kind of knew who we were, and we knew that going in that they would know some things we do and know some some calls and stuff of, yeah. of, of how we play offensively. But <clears throat> you got to give them credit. They were ready to play against right. us. And obviously, they're, they you know, that being on the road that early, that soon, I didn't like it. And, I yeah. you know, obviously Coach Weber, we, you know, wanted to play a really mm-hmm. early road game. But, you know, you – and we did, and, and, and the kids just responded. And they didn't know that was the earliest road game in K-State yeah. history, true road game. They just thought we were going to Vegas. So right. I guess we kind of approached it like that, a, a, a business trip to Vegas. And then you kind of add in the game on Wednesday night against Monmouth to get to 3-0. Another, another slow start. You're down 29-20 at halftime. And then you score 53 in the second half. I don't know what the run was. At one point I had you guys winning the second half 33-6. to um, So just how proud were you of the effort, especially in the second half of that game? I mean, we're playing hard. We're just yeah. we're, we're trying to figure some things out offensively. And I, and I think people have to be really patient with our guys because when you lose guys who always had the ball like Dean and like Barry, all of our offense went through them and obviously Cam – running what we did and and, and obviously Cardi and, and X you know being you know very good role guys yeah. and uh, now it's it's different you know Cardi and X are the main guys and I and, and obviously Mac and and now the bench is way better than it's been yeah. you know and that's the the thing that is the most impressive is that our young guys can come in and get buckets we don't have to play uh, our, our starters 37 38 minutes like we have the last yep. two years in games like this to win and we've had to do that i don't want to skip past the experienced guys because they're very important to this team of course but i wanted to ask about the young guys because i don't remember which game it was but i remember coach weber saying that the three freshmen led the play hard chart one night and then even last night when they're not making shots in the first half those three continued to play hard so how nice is it to have kids who can help you even when they're not scoring right it's good because the energy they bring you know and we always want to say just the three freshmen it's david too course, because yeah. david is a big part of yeah of our new group with with how he can <clears throat> excuse me push the ball pass the ball and uh handle the ball so those things that he provides um are as much of a spark as all the freshmen's energy the energy yep. of our freshmen is tremendous all three of them have tremendous energy that new energy when you first get somewhere yep. and you yep. and you're just bouncing off the walls that's what they have. David is the calming guy. Yeah. He, he, he's played two years of junior college. He's what you want a junior college player, a good player, and also a guy who's who really feels like he's been there before. I'm glad you brought up David because there was a stretch, you know, in the Monmouth game in the second half. I, and I'll get some of the stats wrong, but he had two or three possessions where he led the break and showed handles we haven't, haven't quite seen lately here and finished a break like that. Is he getting, you know, more and more comfortable just three games into this time here? Right. I think, you know, when David is, is, is going to continue to grow, all of them are, yeah. but, but David is a real point guard. He can push it. He can pass it. And the thing that's so unique about him, he got P.J. his first three. The yep. very next play, he, he could have passed like to two or three guys. He tried to make sure P.J. got another shot, yep. and he did. And that was the tip dunk, which counted, by the way. It was absolutely not it, the it cylinder. Was, wow. Was, yeah. You know, we're not supposed to talk about that, yeah. but that was clearly <laughs> off the rim. Correct. I'll off say the it rim. all the time. Yeah. Uh, but he found him again to try to make sure he got another shot. And that's that's something very unique and, and a point. And, that's why Dave is going to be successful with us. I know Coach Weber made a comment to, to John Kurtz on, I think, Wildcat Insider, something along the lines of at one point he was considering red.
redshirting, you know, Monty early in the process. Like, how far has he come along since that time? And is it surprising to you guys at all that he's playing as many minutes as he is already? Well, I mean, I think when you talk about redshirt, when they got here, that was never the talk because right, you right. just you got to wait and see. But you know, sometimes as, as as a coach, you envision, okay, these are the numbers. This guy might and that guy might, but once they got here, I mean, yeah. obviously you see how talented he is, and he's a starter. Right. So that's that shows his skill level, where he's at. Now he's got to get better, obviously, but um, you know he's a, he's a kid who really embodies what we do. One thing that feels like you know, as there have been some first half struggles offensively, but defensively, you give up 54 to North Dakota State, 48 in regulation to UNLV. 54 again last night. So that group, at least so far, doesn't seem a whole lot different production-wise than last year's. Well, the thing about this group is that we have four new guys mixed in. Right. And, and they are, they've really done a good job of figuring out the hardest part of what we do, and that is how we scheme, how we play on that side of the ball. So many calls, so many switches, so many things that you got to understand how to do. Yeah. Uh, and so much more talking and communicating. As a young person or a new person, you don't really want to – open your mouth you right, know? right. And, and these guys have done a good job uh, offensively you know we, we just we are struggling shooting the ball we know that but the good thing about it once we start making shots everybody contributes right and sometimes when you you know when you're older only the older guys contribute and I think we've seen if you look at our stat sheet I think 33 minutes last night was the most minutes but then you saw several six five four six all eight. sorts of them yeah you saw a bunch of different scoring and that's the key, the bench. If we can get our bench's production to stay the same and continue to, to, to give our older guys a comfort level of being, you know, the guys now that, you know, we've had, you know, all-time greats move on. Yep. Um, then we got a chance to be successful. Something Coach talked about after the game last night was you have a, a decent stretch to practice now after these first three games. I don't know how excited the kids are about you know the long stretch of practice, but how important is it to have this opportunity? Well, I think it's, it's, it's important to play games and it's important to practice yeah. as well. I think when you have a long stretch, you got to be careful of driving them in the dirt uh, for practice concerns. But you also got to make sure that our development is is the number one thing we continue to do. And 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 Coach Weber knows what he's doing, and he knows he knows that our guys got to continue to develop. But we're also on the third game of the season, yep. and you can't panic. Uh, if we're 0 and three or one and two, then obviously you'd be saying some things about okay, where's this thing going? But there's still energy. The guys yeah. love playing with each other. There's camaraderie developing, and that's that's important too. When you have an old and new, it, so it doesn't become the old guy versus the young guys, and that's that's something that that happens with teams is that the new guys are heralded, yeah, and the older guys are, are were guys that were already here, and now there's a there's a clash between right. uh, the power struggle is whose team is it? That's not the case with our guys. The young guys know, and they just play hard, and that's the beauty of of that group. Uh, you know, some more young guys will be coming in next year. Of course, yesterday, Wednesday, whatever day this is airing, was was not early signing period. You guys signed, at least from a Rivals perspective, four Rivals 150 members. That was the first time K-State's ever done that in the history of the program. Different services have you guys in different spots, but uh, really high wherever you look at it. I guess I want to go player by player is what I want to do. And Coach Weber talked about how important it was to get Nigel Pack early, and a smart guy told me that was a big you know focus for you guys early on, too. Just you might talk me through that process of getting him and how big he was to start this class. I think with Nigel, um, just seeing <laughs> how good he was and and just recognizing that sometimes people don't pay attention. Yeah. And when they don't pay attention, you know, it becomes, oh, he's not that good. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously when we watched and having ties back home in Indiana and really just watching how good he was and um, – Understanding where he could go as a player, man, he 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 could really really be special. Yeah, and um, a shot making ability, leadership ability, um, you know, qualities, characteristics, um, ability to get better. I mean, a willingness to work hard. All those things he has them, and that is so good for that position. Right. Um, he's a high character kid. He's a he's a big time scorer. He can really pass the ball, and he rebounds well for a you know a, a, a little guy. So you know, getting him, um, you know, we, we made it push to do right. it because we knew, and and doing it, and then he gets the peach jam, and people are like, oh, this guy's good. Let's try get, to recruit him. him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, he's going to Kansas State. Let's still try to recruit him. Right. So that was kind of a deal <laughs> where you know the 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 family, um, great family. They were like, hey. 
this is not who we are. We we made a commitment to you guys. We came there on our you know, and and really um, trust you guys. So once that was said, and once you know we continue to get to know them, we were so excited to get them. I know every one of these kids and families, you guys build long term relationships. So so Luke Kazuki, I'm sure is no different. But he feels like a guy that you guys you know knew for a long time worked with for a long time he had op you know missouri was hard in him illinois was he had options i guess just talk me through that process and how that all worked out for you guys well you know we got a long-standing relationship with with that with the city yeah. in, of st louis and surrounding area on the illinois side um and to literally know him and as an eighth grader eighth grader and that's where we knew him and it was one of those deals where we were actually you know recruiting somebody else right you know, and they and they said, "Go get the freshman out of the back gym and bring him and let these guys see him." Yeah. And then you know, Coach Weber, to his credit, said that kid's gonna be really good someday. Right. And he, I mean, and it's one of those deals where you're just like, okay, whatever. And uh-huh. we just keep, you know, we keep, we keep recruiting, and then we come back, and he keep coming back, and then he grows all of a sudden. Then he gets 50 in a game, and Coach right. says, "What?" Right. <laughs> and I go, "Yeah, you got 50." And he goes, "Well, we need to like ramp it up a little bit." So. um Continuously recruiting him and being there and being in that gym when he was not even a guy who was on the you know the top of the scouting report for them. Yeah, and just showing your face in a in a program like Chaminade in uh, St. Louis, who's always going to have players. They have another younger player there, that, you know, that's getting recruited. So, you know, they they're always going to have guys, and the visibility of your program in front of young players is is the key. And that was the key with Luke is, is standing strong and recruiting him hard for a long time. With Luke, and you mentioned it too, both you and Coach last night mentioned he has maybe more length and size than people understand. I've seen him listed anywhere from 6'4 to 6'6. I haven't seen him in person to know how big he is. And then he's probably a little better athlete than some people give him credit for, I would guess. Well, you know, Luke's 6'5, yeah. and Luke will try to dunk you too. Luke, right, is, right. Luke is, you know, he wants to catch alley hoops. He wants yep. to show people that he's more uh, than just a shooter. And that's great because he he's really worked at his game, and he's a worker. Bee. He's always trying to refine his, his game and, and try to – get better um, and, and that's the beauty of that class we have so many guys that want to get better that have chips on their shoulder that that want to prove how good they are uh, you know sticking in st louis and i think we could talk about they get all worked out we talk about it now but uh coach weber reference was tonight maybe even knowing davian bradford since you know since eighth grade or that kind of thing so a similar story there with a guy you guys from st louis you knew for a long time and it worked out for you obviously yeah he was he was you know a kid that we, when we saw him early, he was at a different school, and, you know, he, he would try to dunk and fall down, and we would laugh. And literally, <laughs> right, we were right. kind of laughing at him, like, yeah. look at this big goofball. <laughs> you know, I hope he likes basketball because, mm-hmm. you know, never know. Because he was, you know, 6'8", 9", right. and then, then, you know, we, we come back and see him sophomore. He's 6'10", or 11", and then, you know, as a junior, he's getting all these offers. We're like, okay, we at least we've been in front of him. Right. At least we've um, – Really, really, really try to recruit him, and and he is, uh, he's a kid who's who's got a huge heart. He's a lovable kid. You're going, people will love him immediately, just because he's a teddy bear, um, and his approach to stuff is he's he's very kind. He's very personable to anybody he meets, and so those are the things that that'll stand out with him right away. Beyond being, you know, a, a footer, you know, right. seven foot guy is he's big and. Is he athletic? Is he tough? And coach, you know, calls him aircraft carrier because he's so big exactly. and, mm-hmm. and physical. So we're we're excited about Dave Hamm because he provides us with that big guy you can throw it to, right? In the post, and and it's not a guy you say, hey, he's six nine and he's really six seven. You know, he's really six eleven and up. He's right. that big, and um, you know, we're excited because. Um, you know, he's a kid we can groom into into something that we feel is, is be a dominant uh, player. He also, you know, kind of the, to the naked eye, looks like somebody who's done already some pretty good work on his body for a high school like seven footer. Is that I guess is that accurate? And is that kind of encouraging that he probably has that work ethic already? Well, I think the, the good thing about it is a good high school. Um, he, he, I mean, obviously they work at it, and, and him getting in the best shape is ahead of him. We yeah. know that with with what we do. With nutritionists and with weightlifting and all that stuff, he's going to get even better. But he's got a good head start to where he needs to be physically, and that's something that he's going to continuously get better at. Another guy, you know, last but certainly not least, who looks like he's got a pretty good start physically is, you know, Selton Miguel, a four-star kid from any service out in, out in Florida. Um, same question, just kind of the process on getting him and what he offers you guys. Well, it was a long process again. And yeah. Coach Weber had obviously seen him when he was young and, 
Um, obviously, you know, with Barry Brown being from Florida, people in, in that area recognize that, you know, we're willing to come down there and recruit that area. And, yeah. and to see um, how talented, tough, and, and physically imposing he is, we're just like, this dude's going to, like, it's like, you know, he, he's going to go past a lot of states and a lot of universities to come play for Kansas State. Right. And I think that's what needs to be put in perspective about all these kids. There are great places where they can go play basketball right in their backyards. And for Selton to be from Angola and then come from Florida right. <laughs> to Kansas State is, is a big, big deal because his talent says he can go a lot of places where he really wants to, where, where he can be successful. It can always be, you know, dangerous to label kids' positions. But if I'm going to do that, you know, this class you've got, from the high school perspective, you know, one, two, three, and five. And then you go back to last year's, and then you have Antonio and Monty who are, you know, three, four, hybrids, whatever. Dejuan can probably play one, two, three. I get, but what I'm getting at is do you feel good about the different position distribution you've gotten through these last seven, you know, high school kids you've signed? Yeah, that was that was obviously a major point of, of getting the, the positions and the classes in a certain way that would be beneficial long term. Yeah. You know, we knew – you know, with with what we had leaving, that we had to really times to it. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And 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 get different multi positional players and in, in positions, but not have them in the same class. And um, I mean, you can see the the development of Monty and Tone. Last night we played them together, and yeah. that's really a first. We played them long term minutes together. You know, and that's good because. Um, they're going to be together on the floor a lot. Yeah. We think moving forward, you know, and to see those two, uh, and then Dejuan and David, we had all four of them on the floor together. All, and we've never been able to do that. Put a whole class right. on the floor at the same time uh, since we've been here, and and that's the the beauty of that class, the versatility, um, and we think the energy and the enthusiasm to play the game is really really high with the last two groups we've signed. To switch gears to close this up, I've joked with uh, John Kurtz about trying to get you a football segment on Powercat Game Day because I don't know if people will know. I'll get a text once in a while. You're pretty passionate about, <laughs> about this thing. And, of course, Brian Anderson, running backs coach, at, compliments you every time he sees me. I guess I just want to ask your your perception of this team. You know, they're 6-3. and three. Uh, Nobody, I mean, at least no, very few thought they'd have six wins through nine games. What's it been like for you to watch this team and your thoughts on this football program right now? Um, you know, I, just, I was going to really just sit back and, and just watch. And, you know, when and, and what – Winning is winning, yeah. and sometimes you can put a cap on guys and say, "Well, he was D two or he was one double A." Well, most coaches started somewhere, yeah, and they're not the finished product of what they become in the end, in the beginning. So obviously, he's got pedigree. You know, he's he's worked his way, and 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 to see, and the culmination was obviously Oklahoma, and to see the the yep. game planning to beat them and how how we handled, you know, this so called they're going undefeated, right. they're going to be. In the you know in the playoff, in the hunt yeah. in the playoff and and to see what we did to them and to make that team look very regular As, and yeah. that's not a disrespect to them because they were rolling like a machine before they came to Manhattan and so that's when you know you've got something okay this is not a fluke this guy can really coach the game um, because of just the planning of it because you can't just show up and say we're going to beat these guys talent yeah. for talent because that's obvious that that's not what we have compared to what they have it's preparation it's scheming and it's 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 a lot of film film and video in a short period of time uh, for those guys and the fun thing about it is it's different and yeah. there's no disrespect to we understand we have a we've had a you know a tremendous hall of fame level coach here <laughs> yeah absolutely um and now it's different and to embrace that is is if you're purple and white, that's what you got to do. You know, right. you got to embrace that, and you got to love the fact that how the kids are responding to it. Because if it was a bad mix, those kids would really show it, and they would show outwardly, they would show it publicly, and then kids are not they they will, they will tell you like yeah. that this isn't it. You know, the old way was the best way, and that and that's they haven't they haven't been disrespectful, but they have said, hey, it's different, right, and. And when the change happens and you can get guys to embrace the change and play at a level where the change looks like, hey, okay, those guys really have, have, have gotten better. And, and in the quarterback position, they were right. You right. Know, Coach Snyder was right about that kid. He's right. really good. Right. You know, and to see him throw BBs now and see him be mature and older and a guy that 
they said even he got he's going to be the guy. He is the guy, and you know he was he's he's grown into that, and he's been very good. And the running back situation up and down, and for us to be able to move the ball like we right. moved it with injuries, and um, I'm excited about the wide receiver. You know, Knowles and. and Young blood. Did you see, like did you all see the guys. race video last night? I of- saw it and I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I, I mean, he, but, but that shows, you know, obviously we're, you know, the Schoen family. We know him. Right, and, right. And that shows how good he is. Right. If he you can, know he, Dalton if can't he, run, yeah. We can't run, but he can catch. And yeah. Then that's, <laughs> and he's obviously, he's, you know, he was a position receiver and he's a, right. and he's a good one. But that other guy's lightning in the bottle. <laughs> and, you know, I think you're going to see him just take off even more as his career grows. If the if your whole team just raced a hundred yards, who would you take in that race? Just pure speed down the field. Um, it will probably be between Cardi and X. Yeah, I think. Yeah, a couple just, of long strides too for those guys. Just, just running, I think those two guys probably would. I mean, X was obviously a football recruit right. who could have played, you know, high major college football, and. Uh, you know, that, and the good thing about our guys, they love football too. So yeah. X is obviously at every game. You know, cheer. Levi is a college football prospect, so he's there. So we we enjoy Saturdays. You know, I and, saw Youngblood tweeting about being in Bramlage last night and that kind of stuff. So it's cool to see that you know back and forth between those two programs. Well, well Youngblood is tight with some of our younger guys, yeah. so they have that bond, and that's good when you can and have you know players from all multi sports be friends. That lets you know that you got a good place, right? Because now they're bonding together and and they're sharing each other's success, and that's that's a great great uh, chemistry to have on a campus, no doubt. Well, better football analysis than I've given at any point this year on the site. <laughs> so I really appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on the three and zero start, and I think a couple of underrated, pretty good wins early, and then you know maybe the best class you've had since you got here. I just appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.